Okay, so this is my tribute to and eulogy to Brenda Jose. Okay, you, you know you have seen sitcoms, TV shows, the swan song of the singer groups like MASH. Have you heard of MASH? MASH is like a, an old sitcom. Huh? It's about Vietnam, and, 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 uh, but it's, it's like a, a, a sitcom. Please, please, please usher them. Uh, or, or have you heard of Every, Everybody Loves Raymond? Yeah, everybody loves Raymond. Uh, I'm sure there's the latest one. I'm not with the latest uh, sitcom. I'm sure there's a lot uh, that's very exciting. But these are the ones that Brenda used to love. Or, or, or Seinfeld. Seinfeld was very big, uh, very big in the States. Or Friends. Friends was very big. Or Beatles or Destiny Child. Uh, when Destiny Child, uh, Beyonce uh, left Destiny Child, everyone wondered, will Beyonce be doing well? Uh, or... or, or uh, or, or even Robbie Williams when he left Tic Tac. So a lot of people thought that me and Brenda, you know, we've been co-coaching for 12 years. So will I be doing well? Will she be doing well? Those were the big questions. So uh, let me tell you a story. You know, MASH, uh, some of you are not born. Some of you are Gen Z, right? And the, the Gen Z, those born uh, after 1990, yeah? No, 1990, correct. So MASH was aired in 19, the last episode of MASH. M-A-S-H, I think it's to do with, uh, is it Korea or Vietnam? Vietnam? Vietnam, right? And it's actually, uh, it's kind of deaf comedy, kind of a real twist. Because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, you know, people are dying, so, but there's this humor. There's a guy that dressed like a guy, and it's really fun. And then the last episode was aired on 1983. 60% of USA were watching it at home. It was the biggest, biggest ever. Uh, last episode, and people will uh, people were crying at home. It's like you know you you live with uh, uh, you, you know you live with with an episode like this for ten years, and then you you know you become part of that. So uh, a lot of people cried, and it's a long show, it's two and a half hours. So then people say, you know, why, why don't you continue? You know, it's at the peak. Why, why don't you continue doing it? It's the peak. You can at least act a few more years. So why? Why do you want to split? So now I know why. Because letting... Letting go for the best... Letting go for the best right time to end. Okay, so it's about letting go a concept, an institution, to end at the best right time. Okay, at the uh, and and it's the last peak of the many peaks and valleys. You know, there's a you know in a in a show there's peaks and valleys. So uh, and for the creators, you know, the creators means those who created Mesh. Uh, they know when's the right best time to end. No one else knows. So me and Brenda felt it was, it was the right time. You all didn't know. You all wanted it to continue. Everybody wanted it to continue, but only the creators know it. And me and, and Brenda created this duo. So it's not planned. It just happens. You know, I, we didn't plan to go like, oh, we're going to end, okay? And uh, Brenda and myself have, have uh, experimented it and tried to split. Uh, in 2007 and then 2010, but uh, it didn't feel like it. So on the third time, this was it. So on 2nd January, she said, that's it. She's going back to Hong Kong. She want to take her parents. She literally physically left uh, uh, Malaysia for Hong Kong on 4th February. So uh, that physical thing was quite shock to me. Okay. Before that, she's only six, eight kilometers away. Kind of a, she's still there, la, You know, she's always there, and she and, and we co-coached from uh, 2000 to 2012. So she's always there, yeah. And um, so Brenda, the the shining beacon of light. The word Brenda is actually Irish. It means uh, prince or little raven. You know, the raven, the the. Raven, you know, uh, crow, crow, you know, raven. And uh, it also means a beacon on a hill. 
Uh, some scholars believe it is uh, 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 believe that it means stinky hair. <laughs> really, Brenda uh, has a meaning of stinky hair. Uh, it's actually an old Norse uh, origin that means you know it's a sword or it's a torch or it's burning. So, and I wrote this whole thing. What I admire about Brenda is this: her fiercenessness. I think you agree. Her, her fierce, fierceness and fearlessness. You know, you say she kick ass, right? Uh, Kuma. And then she's an alpha female. You know, it's an alpha female. You know, in the pack, she's the alpha female. She don't mince her words. And then uh, she say it as it is, spontaneous, on the spot. She doesn't analyze, she just do it like this. And she's often the mirror in workshops. You know, a fire gang, you know, a mirror. And then uh, she, she uh, although she haven't written many, uh, read many books, but she's a great problem solver. A lot of CEOs will, will source her, right? And uh, 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 also I admire her for her coaching, her counseling, mentoring, her no uh, BS attitude. You know, it's BS, right? I often call her, she's a no BS girl. Like you, you don't mess with her, okay? But in a nice way, in a nice way. She's never rude. She's very classy. She wants the best from you. You know, like, but it's tough. She'll give you the bitter pill. She won't sugarcoat it. But that's the truth. And I think that's where people appreciate that, right? Um, I also admire her for overcoming Crohn's disease. Let me tell you what Crohn's disease is. Uh, mm. Crohn's disease is what she suffered from 1995. Uh, when I met her, she already uh, was suffering undiagnosed for uh, one year. Uh, when I met her, she was she would vomit. Uh, she was really skinny, like 80 pounds. Uh, did not know what is it. And then um, uh, she tried all types of medicine. She tried uh, Chinese medicine, Western medicine, vegetarianism, acupuncture, but there was no cure. And then uh, she took a workshop, it's called Udu V, which, is, which is means uh, the water of life. And that four days, I know she cried. Uh, and, and it was a very wonderful workshop. Right after that, the Monday, she was admitted to hospital. That was the first operation she ever had in her life. And the operation was seven hours. It was explorative. That means the, the, the surgeon weren't sure what's happening. Because uh, apparently, this is what Brenda told me, that there were two surgeons in uh, Queen Mary Hospital. They were debating. You know, one of them say, I, I'm not going to operate on her. It's very, very late tonight. I'm not going to do this. Then there's this UK English, uh, 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 UK Chinese uh, surgeon that say, no, you know, she's going to die, man. And they were debating. And she's hearing all this like 10 feet away and she's going like oh what the hell you know what's happening here and then uh, and then the uk said okay if you're not going to do this in canada name joelang or chiki joa because he's trying to say it again name so then she she went on uh, he he went on and said i'm going to operate on her so it was seven hours uh, and, and seven inches and she, they took out seven inches of her intestine that was perforated and it was perforated means it's broken, busted. So she could have died, but she didn't. She went on to, to live another 18 years. I think that was the best 18 years of her life. Plus and minus some parts, lah, okay? Uh, and, and, uh, and she lived and she became well, okay? I'll tell you more about Crohn's. Crohn's actually affects your intestines. Uh, it's usually your, your large or your small intestines. And usually it's inflamed. Inflamed means it's, you know, it's, all, it's not smooth. So a lot of vegetarian told her to do vegetarian. Not good idea. Why? Because it's fiber. It's like imagine sandpaper going through your intestine. Not fun. And then it's not a fun disease. Uh, she will warm it 30, 40 times a day. She'll just throw up and throw up. Uh, uh, Crohn's is like this. My brother is a doctor. He described it as a mini SARS. You know SARS? SARS is this. SARS actually is over immunity. It's not actually under immunity like, like it's the opposite of AIDS. AIDS means you get anything, you're dead. SARS is opposite. It's over immunity. It's the system seeing like everything you see is an enemy. So it's trying to have high fever to kill uh, 
they think it's an enemy there. Lah. But actually what it's doing is it's killing its own self. So my brother says this, SARS like this is machine gunning the whole system. Da -da -da, you know, like a high fever. And that's why people die in that f uh, few hours or few days. And that's why they use steroids to, the steroids is not to cure, but to suppress the fever. Because it's, it's, it, the, the, the genes is killing himself. Yeah? So this is a wonky genes, this Crohn's. It's, uh, it's wonky in that it doesn't recognize good from bad. So when it's a bad bout of Crohn's, it will say, hey, what? even the water you're drinking is poison and you will throw up. Kind of get the picture? And she cannot uh, absorb, uh, probably she can only absorb one quarter of nutrients. Uh, of the inflammation. So that's Crohn's disease. You, you can Google search it and, and read more. Wow, I wrote a lot. Maybe I don't read all this thing. I'll just pick and choose. Uh. So uh, I just wrote that she's the rock of Gibraltar. You know what's rock of Gibraltar? She's the, the anchor and, and my million thanks to her. She's my co-coach for 12 years. We dance, we together in coaching, we turn around companies, we, we played good cop, bad cop. She's always the one that played bad cop. Right now. She always played bad cop, right? And then she's damn good at it, right? Yeah. Uh, and of course, Papillon is a, is a big, is a big, uh, is a big uh, part of, of Brendan and myself. Oh, I even wrote a personal note. Uh, so this is both a very happy and very sad occasion for me. Uh, you started as grasshopper in Rainbow Master. Okay, I have to exit. Uh, I, I created a, a spiritual workshop called Grasshopper in 1995. And uh, in, in the West, when you say grasshopper, the master will say, okay, grasshopper, today we're going to learn this. Okay? You know, it's like, it's like the karate, what? Karate kid, oh, grasshopper, come here, grasshopper, you know? So it's just a joke. Lah. But, uh, but this grasshopper, I became the grasshopper. Uh, you are my rudder and I was your anchor. I ha we have this concept that, that uh, she, she's my rudder. That means she, she guides me in all my life. I will go this way and she guides me back. I'm her anchor, anchor in that she says that once my anchor is strong, she can fly. But the anchor is not strong, she can't fly. So this anchor and rudder was a very interesting concept, a uh, uh, thing that we did. Uh, and that's good. So I, I don't feel it's a goodbye, I feel it's a new hello. I miss you already, I love you dearly. Namaste, I bow the like in you. That's what I wrote. 